Scott Therrell here today with you to discuss neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters, we need a little background before we really dive into what they do and what they are and how they work and why you would test them and why you wouldn't test them and how you actually test them. So let's start with what they are first. Neurotransmitters are molecules and they help the different portions of your nervous system communicate these different neurons that you have. Now remember, you have a central nervous system, your brain and your spinal cord, you have a peripheral nervous system. Both portions of your nervous system utilize neurotransmitters to communicate with themselves. So very important to know that they're ubiquitous, they're throughout your body, right? But there's also some very interesting connections between the nervous system and the immune system, and this is called the study of neuroimmunology. And neuroimmunology has shown us that not only does the nervous system and the immune system communicate with each other, they actually, the immune system this is, can manufacture some of their own neurotransmitters to stimulate the nervous system, and there's receptors for neurotransmitters on various immune cells. So crosstalk is very important, and you've heard me discuss this in various videos. You can never separate a system in its entirety, right? The nervous system doesn't function alone. It's affected by the immune system and what you eat and whether you're inflamed. It's affected by the endocrine system in terms of thyroid hormones and stress hormones from the adrenal glands, sex hormones, so neuroendoimmunology. So very important to remember that bigger concept all day long. Now, neurotransmitters are also manufactured and found in various parts of the body. The kidneys, the intestinal tract, different aspects of circulating platelets in your bloodstream. So neurotransmitters are very important and because they're found everywhere, we need to figure out the appropriate ways to use the testing and how to interpret it. Now, the testing's been around since 2000. If you're relatively new to integrative care, it's possible that that testing still isn't even in your practice if you're a practitioner or if you're a patient looking for practitioners, they may not have heard about it yet either because even though it's 18 years old already, in the world of how quickly things get adopted and integrated into healthcare and medicine, Two decades is still pretty slow, uh, pretty early in the, in the adoption process. A lot of times it takes 30, 40, 50 years for something to become mainstream in terms of healthcare. So if you're brand new to neurotransmitters, listen, they're not brand new anymore. There's lots of labs doing these testing now. And if you're new as a patient, they've been around since 2000. And so don't feel like, geez, it's the newest kind of fly-by-night sort of routine. This is here to stay. And it's, uh, it's wonderfully helpful clinically. Okay, I get a lot of questions from both patients as well as practitioners alike while I'm out there teaching. Um, how is it that the validity works? And the validity works very simple. Any lab that's doing neurotransmitter testing is a CLIA certified lab. They have to validate their methodologies and their consistency to the federal government to have their CLIA certification. And they have to do this every two years and recertify. So I don't think you need to be worrying about the validity of the test. The next question, which is a very, very fair question, is its applicability, right? And so if you're a patient or if you're a practitioner that's new to this concept, it's a fair question to say, why would you do a peripheral test? Meaning it's a peripheral fluid urine test. Why would you do a peripheral test to get a snapshot of the nervous system when so much of the nervous system is central nervous system and brain? Now that's a fair, fair comment, right? Because there's no way for us to go in and just grab neurotransmitters from the brain and see what's going on. When we look at a peripheral test, we're looking at total body output, central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, immune system, gut, kidneys, etc. It's a lot of various sources of neurotransmitters. But I want you to take that same discussion and flip it a little bit and say, what else do we test peripherally? And when we optimize these markers, what positive effect does it have? You see, we test as clinicians almost everything peripherally, whether it be blood tests for a CBC and a chemistry for a blood count, whether it be a urine test for neurotransmitters or a urinalysis, whether it be a stool test, right, for maybe something infectious or dysbiosis, whether it be a food allergy test, again, usually blood, hormones, adrenal hormones, could be salivary, could be blood, a cortisol rhythm, a DHEA, sex hormones, could be blood or it could be saliva as well. All of these are tested peripherally. And I don't think there's a single one of us that would argue that when you test these markers peripherally, and if you have the opportunity to optimize 
these markers. Meaning, if you can optimize your adrenal system, if you can optimize your thyroid system, your immune system from a gut inflammation, food allergy perspective, including your neurotransmitter system, you see changes not only peripherally in the body, but you see changes in brain function as well. And that's true of adrenal, of thyroid, of food allergies, of gut, of sex hormones, right? How many of you have been perimenopausal or menopausal and you start to improve and support estrogen levels and progesterone levels and testosterone levels and all of a sudden mood changes and sleep patterns change and body mass changes and energy changes and sex drive changes, it all starts to come together. You cannot just go after central versus peripheral body systems and the same goes for nervous system. So hopefully that dispels this myth of there's no utilization of a peripheral marker to affect the brain. Because the truth is, whether it's a peripheral marker for vitamin D, for thyroid, for an adrenal cortisol, for a sex hormone, or for a neurotransmitter, they're all going to affect the brain, and hopefully in a very positive way, once you can optimize these systems. Now, let's get into the who, what, where, when, why, and how of testing. Who's a neurotransmitter test for? Well, the most common symptoms that I use neurotransmitter testing for are patients that are experiencing fatigue throughout the day, difficulty maybe with attention or cognition or memory challenges, and we're looking how to fuel some of that systems, difficulty with um, challenges with mood, whether it be more of a depression, more of an insomnia, anxiety type of scenario. But if your mood challenges is really there, we need to make sure we're trying to support some of those neuroendocrine systems to see if we can affect your, your mood, your energy, your metabolism. Patients in chronic pain and different pain scenarios, how do we support the nervous system and the endocrine system and immune system there? And neurotransmitters are a key part of that. Insomnia. Anyone who's having a tough time sleeping, super important to be able to look at hormones and neurotransmitters to be able to see how we can help you sleep better that way too. And so all of that comes together right? And mood, memory, fatigue, sleep, pain are the biggies, right? But those are all appropriate ways in terms of who do we use neurotransmitter testing for from a symptom perspective. Like where do we want to actually get a snapshot of the nervous system in terms of neurotransmitter function and output to better support our patients and fuel our patients. Now, what type of test do we do? There's different panels. There's neurotransmitter tests that are as small as usually six markers, seven markers, and there's neurotransmitter panels that are up above 12 markers. Depending upon your history, the complexity of your, of your case, we may order a smaller panel, we may order something bigger. And that's a discussion between your clinician and yourself, what you wanna order, why you're gonna do it, and what's the clinical thinking and reasoning behind it. But know that there's different size panels. You can also take that same basic neurotransmitter panel and you can add on a cortisol rhythm, a four-point cortisol and a DHEA, an adrenal hormone panel from the saliva. So that's called a neuroadrenal type of panel. You can expand it even bigger and you can now have neuroendocrine panels, which includes the neurotransmitters, the adrenal system and sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, etc. So different panels for different reasons. And a lot of my patients, you know, neurotransmitters are an add-on to what they've already done. Maybe they did a cortisol rhythm and DHEA three months ago. Maybe they have their thyroid panel from two months ago and the neurotransmitter piece just hasn't been filled in yet. Well, then we would just do a smaller panel, right? Versus something so large. If you haven't had any of it done and you're brand new to all of this integrative care, then maybe we're gonna order the big panel and get a nice big baseline depending upon what's going on with you clinically and what makes sense. So that is the who and the what. Now, where do you actually do a test? You do the test in terms of where in your own home. And so it's nice and simple. This is urine and saliva collections, urine for the neurotransmitters. If you add on those bigger panels, these are saliva panels. And it's very comfortable and easy to collect these samples in your own home. When do you do them? All right, so the when is interesting because there's different philosophies out there and ideas behind how to utilize these tests again. It's not that anyone is right versus wrong, it's just different ways of interpreting it and thinking about it. I, in my own practice, still mostly do what are called spot urine collections, where you collect urine for two to three hours in your bladder, and then we take a sample of that. I like those samples to be collected at the time that you're most symptomatic. So if you say, gee, Scott, I am so tired in the morning when I get up, that's gonna be a good time to do a neurotransmitter test. If you say, ah, oh, I've got a tremor and I'm a movement disorder case and it gets a lot worse in the afternoon, then we're gonna probably gonna do an afternoon collection, right? If you're 
a child or an adult who says, boy, in the afternoon, my attention system just crashes. Okay, then let's get a snapshot of what's going on in the afternoon. If you're somebody who has a hard time falling asleep and you're an insomnia patient, then let's do a collection before you go to bed at night. I think that makes sense. I've been using these tests since 2004 in my own practice. That's how I've always used them. That's how I continue to use them. That's how I like to use them. I think they have great clinical applicability that way, uh, getting a snapshot of your kind of metabolic output at the time when you're most symptomatic. Why? Why do we do this at all? Well, the whole purpose of the why, of course, is to fuel your nervous system, both your brain and your body, right? That's what neurotransmitters are primarily going to help with. So if our goal as an integrative care provider is to make sure that your multiple systems, your nervous system, your endocrine system, your immune system, your GI tract are all working at their peak performance in order to minimize any other symptomatology you may have clinically. Neurotransmitters have to be there as the predominant marker of nervous system function. It's so important to be able to peek at these and look at what they're doing. And if you think of each one of these hormones or neurotransmitters, and again, so you've got neurotransmitters, you've got thyroid hormones and a good thyroid panel, you've got adrenal hormones, cortisol and DHEA, you've got sex hormones. If you look at all of these as just a fuel tank, each one of those markers within each one of those panels and systems is a fuel tank, we want your tanks topped off, right? That's the why we do it, so that when stress hits in your life, whether it's a chronic pain physical type of stress, whether it's a cognitive stress, learning something new at work, or whether it's an emotional stress with different social interactions, right? Doesn't matter what it is. We want you to be able to be topped off in your different systems so that you have energy to pull down from. This is how I believe you're gonna have the best body and brain function to get through the day and really live the very best life that you can. And that's the whole concept of neuroendoimmunology. And of course, when you tie all that together with how do we actually optimize those systems, it's gonna be a combination of lifestyle and diet and supplementation. Neurotransmitter systems respond very well to amino acids and to herbs, right? Bioidentical hormones for sex hormone optimization. Maybe it's something like licorice root for cortisol rhythm control. There's many different ways to do it. And at the end of it all, having a healthy lifestyle with a low inflammatory diet and great sleep patterns and a good social structure and a job you actually like, that's all very important too. So we always wanna remember it's lifestyle plus everything else that we do in terms of an integrative office environment. All that comes together to help support this nervous system, endocrine system, and immune system in a very efficient way. And it gives you the patient and it gives me the clinician a roadmap of where to go. Because if we sit here and we continue to just go through a really solid history, right? And there's some awesome questionnaires out there for different systems, different hormone and neurotransmitter systems. But if we don't do the markers, we don't have a solid of a roadmap of what's looking hot, what's looking pretty good and what's looking low. So I like a roadmap. I like numbers. That's why I order and utilize neurotransmitter testing in the first place. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of window of insight into why we would do these particular biomarkers for patients and who they're most appropriate for, how easy they are to perform, and just how different the panels can be depending upon what's going on with your own symptoms, what's going on with your own systems, and just how complex or simple your case may be. That's going to vary what we order, why we order. Listen, if you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our channel. We release these videos on a regular basis. I would love for you to subscribe and follow me. I think we'll be able to give you a lot of good information over time, and I'll appreciate your comments and your insights. Let me know what you wanna learn. There's a lot of topics out there in terms of health and integrative health, and especially brain health and optimal aging, and how do we keep this brain and body working at the very best levels they can work at so that we can feel our best for decades to come. It's a big, beautiful, exciting, changing field, this integrative healthcare system. I've been lucky enough to be a part of it for the better part of two decades already, and I'm honored to work with all the patients that are in my practice. This is Dr. Scott Therrell. Thank you so much for your time and your attention today. I hope we enlightened you with some different facts and some different ideas on how to test for different biomarkers and why we would do that. I am wishing you your very best brain, your very best body, and your very best life. Take care.